Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Morales and I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society Conference and I have the pleasure of being here with Dr. David Albert who is the founder of Alive Core, which makes these very popular cardio mobile devices. So Dr. Albert, thank you for taking a few minutes to interview with me for, Dr. for our Dr. Morales, website, thank so. you very much. I'm, uh, it's a pleasure. Uh, we, we follow each other on social media and I find your postings to be especially helpful thank for you. the AFib patients. Thank you, thank you. And you're quite pro prolific in the Twitter world as, as, as well. But I wanted to talk to you about the Cardia products, you know, you've been, it's been out for several years now, but, you know, it's a very popular product, many people use it, so tell us a little about the story of, you know, what led to it, how it got all started to become the product that many people know today. Well, it was very interesting. Uh, it was an idea I had that goes way back to the 1990s, so I would call it the last millennium. Mm -hmm. And uh, it wasn't really practical. We didn't have the portable computing, the wireless connectivity mm -hmm. uh, technology, the chips. And so then came Steve Jobs in 2007, mm -hmm. and one more thing, and he brings out the iPhone. And, and for the first 18 months, you couldn't develop anything, but I saw that and I said, maybe this idea of a direct connection between a patient's heart and, and a cardiologist's brain mm -hmm. could finally be realized. And so finally in 2010, with some partners, we built the first Cardia mm -hmm. device, which was a case for the iPhone 4, shows okay. you how long ago it was. Yeah. Uh, and and, uh, you know, a lot of people were very skeptical that it would be good enough, mm -hmm. it would be accurate enough, mm -hmm. that something you could potentially sell mm -hmm. directly to consumers, that physicians, if they weren't going to get reimbursed, would use it, mm -hmm. that patients, if they had to pay out of pocket, would buy it. And so we went on a journey. Mm -hmm. And that journey has been really interesting uh, as we slowly built validation. I mean, I came out of, I left academic medicine 30 years ago to start my first company. Mm -hmm. This is my fourth company. And I knew what you had to do. I have a hundred publications, mm -hmm. trained at Duke and at the University of Oklahoma, Sonny Jackman. And, mm -hmm. and so we began doing research with my friends, mm -hmm. uh, people like Rod Passman and John Steinberg, mm -hmm. and began publishing papers, Caldoun Tarachi at Cleveland Clinic. And slowly but surely, we gained the academic credibility, mm -hmm. the validation, and that led to today, mm -hmm. the majority of our devices are sold because a cardiologist and electrophysiologist mm -hmm. tells his patient to buy them. And uh, I can tell you an anecdote. My, my good friend, Dr. Jeff Olgan, electrophysiologist, mm -hmm. chief of cardiology here at UCSF, gave one of our devices to a patient about seven years ago, and he calls me into his office, and I go over there, and he's got a scowl on his face. Mm -hmm. He said, Dave, I gave your device to a patient and he sent me 20 ECGs the first day. And I said, yeah. you and I both have mm -hmm. a problem. Yeah. He said, you picked the wrong patient and didn't educate yeah. him. And I have just left you with, with email. Mm -hmm. And that's a very poor, because once you get an email, it's non-HIPAA compliant. You know, they can send mm -hmm. it to you, but what you do with it after that becomes an issue. And I said, we have to resolve that. So we've worked right. very hard. Uh, Cleveland Clinic and Calvin Tarachi mm -hmm. have been instrumental. Other people helping us build what we call Cardio Pro, which mm -hmm. is our totally HIPAA compliant physician portal, yeah. so that now data can go directly to a physician. They don't have to look at it immediately. Mm -hmm. Physicians have learned to select the right patients, mm -hmm. to educate them. I'm not going to look at this immediately. You know, when you come in, we'll look at your data, we'll review it. Caldoun Chirachi the other day did a virtual AF post-ablation visit mm -hmm. and showed, you know, AFib, 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 ablation, and then all sinus rhythm mm -hmm. for the last year. And you could do that in, an, you know, it was a nice graph showing that resolution of the AFib and the maintenance of sinus rhythm. That's the power and the efficiency, the security, and all the things that make your life mm -hmm as a practicing yes. AFib doctor, yes. uh, practical. And we had to learn that. Mm -hmm. That wasn't easy. Mm -hmm. And so this is, I would tell you that, you know, uh, a lot of people were skeptical that this would be a success. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden in September, the world's biggest company mm -hmm. became my competitor. Yes. And everybody thought, oh, the Apple Watch is ECG, you're dead now. Yeah. And our sales went up 60%. Yes. And we've never been more successful. We continue to grow rapidly. And, and they are going to learn some interesting lessons. Like, mm -hmm. the only way to get your data is to email to doctors. Mm -hmm. I can already tell you, they don't like that very yes. much. Yes. And so, and it's not HIPAA compliant, and hospitals absolutely say you can't do it. Mm -hmm. So if you're at an institution, be it the Texas Heart Institute yes. or the Mayo Clinic, they say, no, you yeah. can't do that. Mm -hmm. So Apple will learn those things. Yes. They're a smart company, but 
But, you know, we're going to be introducing our new six lead ECG mm -hmm. product, which can address things like atrial flutter, mm -hmm. give you better mm -hmm. P waves, all kinds of things. We're working with our partners like Mayo Clinic mm -hmm. on QT, mm -hmm. on, on further, more advanced analysis. So, you know, we've got a unique position. We were early. Uh, we've taken a, you know, a right cross mm -hmm. from the world's biggest company mm -hmm. and we still thrive. So, you know, we feel pretty good about, about where we've been yeah. and where we're going. And, and people like you and, and your patients mm -hmm. uh, every day thank us mm -hmm. for giving something that is very, mm -hmm. compared to most medical technologies, yes. $99. Yes. Yes, the price and, point is and, and, you know, it's a diagnostic device. Today, we have 72 peer-reviewed publications. The next one will be the lead article in Circulation EP in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, we've got a lot of new products yeah. coming, a lot of new capabilities, and we're just glad that we have the confidence of people like you, Dr. Morales, and your patients yes. that we can help in their care. I've become a big proponent of people having their own data, and Absolutely. it's also been helpful for workflow and patient management as well. When somebody has something at home that they can manage and, trick and keep track of their AFib, kind of let me know what's going on from home, we can avoid ER visits, hospitalizations, you know, Absolutely. manage people better at home, and they can be very far away from the clinic as well. So I'm a big proponent of the, all this at-home te technology. Now, you mentioned about Apple Watch. Obviously, there's a lot of people out there that are debating, should I get an Apple Watch or should I get a cardio device? And you talked a little bit about it, but for that person out there, that co that patient or a consumer who's trying to decide between the two, why, why should well, somebody pick a cardio I, I'm, or Apple Watch? I, I, I don't talk badly of yes. any of my competitors. Yes. Apple's a fantastic yes, company. Is. I have an iPhone. But what I will say is this, if you have an Android phone, you don't have a choice. You yes. can't buy an Apple Watch. Yes. You gotta have an iPhone. Yeah. You've gotta have your iTunes account. Mm -hmm. you, you, you've gotta be in the Apple ecosystem. Yes. And they're, you know, they're fantastic at it. And they make great products. Their watch is a great product. But what I will say is that, that you know, that's gonna cost you $500. And oh, by the way, your doctor, the only way you can get it to them is you can print it out and carry it to them mm -hmm. or that you can email it to them. Mm -hmm. And that is a problem for the workflow of mm -hmm. the doctors. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, Apple's a smart company, but they've said we want the people to be in control. I want people to be mm -hmm. in control. I want them to have access to their data. Mm -hmm. But if they need to get that data to their caregiver, to right. their physician, email is not the right way. Mm -hmm. And so I think we, we they, they will ultimately find that out. So that's another thing. You know, we're tied into institutions like Cleveland mm -hmm. Clinic or Mass General mm -hmm. that have Cardio Pro, and that makes it very seamless. Um, you know, again, if Apple makes great products, mm -hmm. I would tell people we're a better value. Yeah, yeah. and that's sort of one of the things that I take for them. You know, if people want a smartwatch that does all these different things, you know, it's, it's a very good product. But if that's you're specifically right. looking at tracking your AFib, the cardio is, is the way to go, and at $99, it's a fantastic price well, point as well. Well, it's an interesting thing. You know, I would say 95% of the people that buy Apple Watches have no need of ECG. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're 35 years old, yes, and uh -huh. they're young, they're millennials, they're like yes. my children, okay, yeah. the age of my kids. And so, it's not that that's a great feature that's not utilized by most of the people who buy it. But those who buy it, I, I, I have diagnosed AFib mm -hmm. in a friend of mine who had an Apple Watch. Mm -hmm. He, he, he got it, he took an ECG, it said possible AFib, he emailed it to me, and I said, you have AFib? Yeah. And I sent him to his doctor. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm gonna say it's a good product, they're a great company, uh, they're a great competitor, and, and uh, we're just glad that uh, we continue to thrive. Yeah, and I also wanna to touch upon, you know, the next things, the next things that are going on for Cardi, you touched about your six lead version, I know you recently got new indications, right, for Tacky and Brady, right. so kind of let people know what are the new things that have either just come out or the next steps coming well, out for Cardi. Well, you, thank you for bringing that up because our, our, our recent FDA clearance on Tacky and Brady, you know, both AliveCore mm -hmm. and Apple basically give you three uh, diagnoses. Mm -hmm. Like say you're in uh, sinus rhythm, mm -hmm. possible AFib, or indeterminate, unclassified, whatever yeah. they want. We, we call it different things, the same thing. We knew that 30 to 40% of our unclassifieds were simply high and low heart rate. Mm -hmm. And so while we still want to call a heart rate of 30 unclassified, because we really want you to take that to your doctor, we, uh -huh. we want that to be a trigger yes. to go to your doctor, yes. or a heart rate of 140 mm -hmm. when you rest, mm -hmm. we knew that if you have a heart rate of 110 or a heart rate of 50, 
that that's uh, 50, you know, 55, that's normal a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to call that bradycardia, we're going to call that tachycardia. Those are sinus bradycardia, sinus mm -hmm. tachycardia. Those are not unusual. And since mm -hmm. we don't know your context, right. you could have walked up the stairs, sure. you could have been in bed, right. that, that we, we will cut down on the unclassifieds and we will help you be less anxious. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple's now working on, on trying well, to do likely. that too, but I, I don't mind them following us. Yeah, uh, and now the next thing is the six lead. Yeah, right. well, I mean, I, I, it, it, it's not FDA cleared okay. yet, it's not available yet, but I would say very, very okay. soon. And uh, this morning, my friend Eric Topol uh -huh. was uh, tweeting and LinkedIn. Uh -huh. uh, every patient, he's got a, one of our evaluation devices and he's using it to validate it. He's using it on all his patients. I mean, uh, as like physiologists, you know, lead one is not very good for uh -huh. flutter waves. Uh -huh. Lead two is outstanding. Uh -huh. So now, you know, if you have, if you're looking for irregularity, a, a flutter is often very regular. Uh -huh. And it's a very important arrhythmia, mm -hmm. yeah. and therefore we can give a consumer device, they'll be able to buy this directly, that enables their doctor to be able to diagnose mm -hmm. now a very important rhythm that is directly related to atrial fibrillation. So we're very excited about that capability, and that'll be coming very soon mm -hmm. this summer, mm -hmm. and opens up a bunch of new diagnostic, better P waves, mm -hmm. a lot of better, yeah. better capabilities. I, I look forward to that coming out, because managing, you know, in the overall whole picture, managing AFib and flutter are very similar, but diagnosing it from algorithms, you know, can be very difficult because flutter might be very regular. Absolutely. Especially somebody who's had an ablation in the past, the AFib has changed. It becomes a, a, a atypical flutters and it looks very regular and it may be difficult for a device to Absolutely. categorize it yeah. as abnormal. 75 so, beats a minute, 100 beats a minute, could be three to four, one block for mm -hmm. flutter. Now we're going to give you a device yes. where you'll know that. Yeah. And if you've had somebody, as you know, Oftentimes, you do an AF ablation, you do a PVI, and people develop flutter. And you absolutely, yeah. when you do a flutter ablation, you do an isthmus ablation, they develop AFib. So the two are, as you said, yes. very related, and now we're going to give you, the electrophysiologist, better diagnostic yes. information to take better care of your patients. Well, Dr. Alba, I really appreciate taking you a few minutes. We look forward to seeing the next steps for cardio. Dr. Morales, thank, thank you, sir, you. very thank much. Thank you so take much. Care. Appreciate it.